one thought that this was going to be a 3-0, but to quote the people's champion, it doesn't matter what you think. We're going to a map five, baby. And yes, Mimi, I fit a wrestling reference. I need your protest. I thought Tens was the people's champion. Uh, well, he's my champion. <laughs> well, he's not a champion yet. They might get reverse swept here. No. Uh, okay, well, look, <laughs> let's, let us reflect on, on, on this because I do feel a tinge of deja vu because Loud have kind of been in this position before, kind Ender. Of. They've been they've kind of. They've kind of been in this position Does, do before. Do the numbers thir uh, 11 and 3 not mean anything to you, GB? They mean quite a bit, actually. They mean a lot. Yes. In the first event of last year, too, but I, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Loud have already brought it back two games in a row. Please, they have to see it through, or it will be clownery of the century. <laughs> It would be, but but this map was dominant from Loud. It Kens was. was never allowed to get away with absolutely anything on this Yoru. They were shutting him down. They had him red. They were dominating in the opening kills throughout this one. Quick had an absolute turnaround from the first few matches of this series, especially in that first half. And honestly, I was quite impressed by this triple flash come through. The way they were teleporting through, setting up these pinches to punish Sentinels before they could commit to these XX. It was really well called by Sadak and well played from guys like yeah. Quick. Yeah. CK comes in after a pretty poor ice box and drops 18 kills yeah. in the first half. And it wasn't just like kills everyone. It was multiple rounds where it's a 3K, it's a 4K. Huge rounds where he rounds alone where is winning sort of them. winning them for his team. Yeah. It was a fantastic turn on. And that is a bright, bright spot to head into a map five with. Yeah, we'll see if he can continue it going into the fifth map, going into Lotus and what they kind of have cooked up. I think this obviously is a win condition for them. For Loud, if they want to pull this off, it's got to be off the backs of QCK being successful because I, we got to go back to their previous roster. When they were in trouble, yeah, sometimes it was less. Aspas would also step up, and this is the first time it feels like eyes, goes to, eyes go towards QCK. Yeah. You got to do it. Yeah. Now, though, we find ourselves in a pivotal Game five situation. This is it. I mean, for all the marbles here. And at this point, you kind of got to turn to the callers out in the field, right? You got to look at guys like John. You got to look at guys like Sadak. What are they going to bring to the table here, Mimi? For Sadak, this is where he is comfortable. He has played so many BO5s. When he dominated in Brazil in the early days, when he was playing at pretty much every international event for years on end, and when he's been playing right here in America. So this guy is used to this. But for John, this is, I believe, the first time in a VCT game that it's gone to five maps for him. The last yeah, 5 right. he played yeah. was 3-1 losing Ascension with M80. For this IGL who has had an amazing story to make it to this point, has impressed so much thus far on this Sentinels roster. The calling has to be impeccable. He has to pick his team up and turn this around or people will remember Sentinels as a team who choked the 2-0 lead, who lost those two eco rounds on Icebox and let it slip away. Last year in Ascension, it was the biggest match of his life. And yeah. he lost it, and he could not qualify for VCT. But Sentinel still knew him. Kaplan knew he wanted and brought him in. He has the next biggest match of his career ever again today yeah. to win the trophy after not qualifying. He has to come online here. And on yeah. Lotus, the next map, like this is an IGL's playground, especially on the attacking side. How can you abuse doors, give fake info, outrotate your opponent? It is going to be a battle of wits against these two legends. Yeah, and that is just going to make it all the more better. Of course, if you're just joining us here, you have missed quite the series uh, because it has been a roller coaster up and down for Sentinels and Loud. But now we find ourselves here on Lotus, the final battleground to decide who will walk away as your America's kickoff winner. Now, Lotus is a bit of an enigma here. We have one VOD on record for Sentinels. They were playing the, the, the Fade Rays, the Omen, the Viper, the Killjoy. Loud have yet to play this map. We don't know what their read is. Will they be playing a classic Rays on this map, a Dive Agent? Will it be a Phoenix? Will it be something completely different? They have been holding on to that information throughout this tournament, the benefit of them playing so few games to get here, and now it's a surprise in Game 5 for Sentinels. And honestly, I think to go back to the conversation we were just having around Sadak and John QT, this is the perfect stage for this to be settled knowing that both teams tend to anti a lot and they yeah. tend to study film a lot and obviously sentinels has a ton to watch this is a perfect setting like john if you're going to win this it's going to be by feel right like you're going to read the map you're going to read what's happening and you're going to make those adjustments in real time this is where we do have to make the reminder that sentinels played more rounds than every other team in playoffs to make it to this point they have the most tape out there of 
anyone. And in these last two maps, and especially in this final map, I think that puts Loud at a big advantage in being able to look ahead, being able to prep, being able to have those ideas, and their opponent have no clue what comp they're going to play on top of the experience that they already have in these situations, on top of the fact that they have been here before, have won map fives before. Yeah. This is honestly so difficult for Sentinels to win at this point. The good thing for Sentinels is Lotus was played all the way at the back of the beginning of the tournament. They only played it one time. They haven't Been shown everything just yet. And also, when it comes to how they can adapt on the fly, no one does it better, right? Kaplan coming in with the timeout calls, how he and JunkUT know each other so incredibly well, playing together so many years ago on Ghost Gaming, reunited here. They know each other. When those timeouts come in, even if Loud are throwing them something they haven't seen before, they're going to be able to find the right uh, pivots in order to counter it out. I think I really like this too because it feels like it's a strength against a strength here, right? Like yeah. we know where where the the performance needs to come from, and I think there's a lot to look forward to on both sides. We know that Sadak is very good in endurance. We know he's very good at mid rounding. Yeah. We know he's very good at dissecting his opponents. John QT, obviously at a much shorter tenure, has shown a lot of the same. The action is though, it, has Sadak figured him out? Like it kind of feels like he's slowly but surely getting their number, slowly but surely understanding how they want to approach the game. At least it feels like that. I think it's always map by map. I think every yeah. map is a reset point. Mm -hmm. it's a, fair. If, yeah. if your team is doing it right, you cannot let the emotions from the previous matches, the, the tendencies of the previous matches carry through. Sentinels is going to play a very different comp from what we saw in those last two maps. It's a different ball game. It absolutely is. What I expect from a Sentinels game, though, when they load in, is their execs are picture yeah. perfect. All the timings that were cooked up in the lab weeks and weeks and months ago are online. So when it comes to hitting a site, when it comes to retaking, they are absolutely money. But on top of that, inside of the mid-rounding too, the misinformation they can give, especially with their sky or their initiator utility yeah. to set up a fake and even find lurk timings on their own, that is where they thrive and that is the hardest thing to try and pinpoint on a map like Lotus. And in front of this crowd, they have to. The last time Sentinels won a tournament, was in a regional final, and took it home was more than three years ago with a completely different roster. It's been so long since this Sentinel squad has had this success, has been a real contender. Meanwhile, Loud are the defending America's champions. Yep. They're there, right back that. here again. It, but uh, again, it's been a grind to get back. And while, yes, they will remember winning the championship, they will also remember lock-in. So agent select, what is Loud going Going to play Phoenix, the baby. Again. They are committed to this triple flash idea. They're running it back. Now, I assume they're playing an omen alongside this because having a, an agent that can teleport in and get verticality, especially when it comes to controlling rubble at the start of the round, is of absolute importance. By playing Phoenix over a raise, presumably, they are losing that ability. Fascinating. We saw the uh, fade get locked in, of course, for Lotus. You'll wow. see that happen from time to time there. And if and nothing really, like, I think what's going to be it, it, the agents, all that stuff, it, yes, it is going to play a role, but really what it's going to boil down to is the fact that you got people out there that really you just got to want it in this situation. Sometimes it comes down to the individual, you know? Dude, I'm really impressed at how, how hell-bent allowed are on making this cop work. Yeah, uh, the, the breach and now the sky coming into yeah, breach, yeah. especially after the map changes became so powerful. The control you can dish out over the C site when you're hitting it, it is mm -hmm. so hard to solo anchor onto that sky. And we have sky dog as well yeah. to inform where to put that stun on the hit. Oh, that's hard to dodge from. In Sao Paulo, Loud couldn't make the reverse sweep happen. They let it slip them by. But they've made Los Angeles their home. They already took home the trophy in America's last year. And they're back again, looking to be the king kickoff champion. Sentinels have looked good, but they are in a place out of their element. This is familiar territory for Loud. This is their chance to prove why they're the best in the league. Loud are doing it loud style as well. They're coming in year after year with a unique lead on the meta yep. back for another championship attempt here up against Sentinels. Well, they say it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And for both of these teams, it's now a BO1. You got to lay it all on the line, otherwise you're done here. Let's see what happens as we send it over to your casters for the final match of kickoff. <laughs> That's right, GB. It doesn't matter what happened to four previous maps. It doesn't matter who had a lead, who was winning 13-3 on a second map of split for Sentinels. Loud came back, and it's now finally decided on Lotus here, where I'm afraid, again, they have a lot of tape of Loud against Sentinels, and we know what Loud could do with tape, well, like what they did against EG, for yeah. example. It might be a couple of anti-striding coming through here from the big brain of Sadak.
They are going to be vying for mound and rubble position like nobody's business because it is. It's their business. It's both of them. Who's going to get it first? The map control is going to be huge here between these two teams. The mind game of map control and the movement. From attack side, we know Sentinels will go back and forth. John Cute, he's not scared of taking the entire team B for a round. Loud's going to have to be ready for that. Looks like that spike may actually trend towards that area. And they do get a bit of mound con not mound control, but rubble control on that left side with a guiding light to start. No big commitment just yet for Loud. They do peek them. Oh. But Toys is still there. The third player door opening as well. So they're trying to pinch in, trying to pivot yep. between C or B, depending where the picks are going to be from Sentinels. It's on the C side to decide. As three players fall for Loud. Plant coming in. Kaladzin trying to get a forward position, trying to catch one off guard. And Sadak on the flank. Instantly, we have a 2v2. Kaladzin pivoting towards the back. Gets the headshot as well. Standing. Allowing Sadak to win against Sassi. Old teammates going head to head. Sassi repositioned around the, the Trailblazer. Swinging out. The long range of the Frenzy does not connect. And Sadak's ghost, neither. Or Sassi with the ghost here moving forward. Now the re swing out from Sadak. Hot being thrown. Knowing that he's towards the back up towards the air. The shot from above. Sentinels get the pistol. Incredible movement by Sassi. Sadak always buys a frenzy. In a 1v1 situation there, he's closing the distance. Sassi creates more. Sadak closes the distance. Sassi creates more. Stays out of the range of the frenzy. Gets the ghost kill. Sentinels have round one. And that is a modified gun round strat for Sentinels. That will usually see Zekin by himself at door, opening it once B Long has made contact. They went two and two to make sure Zekin's excursion into the doorway was not tainted by any B defense from Loud. Crazy stuff by Sentinels there to modify that. Make it work for a pistol round. Loud now. Losing Low one by. already. Yeah, losing one. That B main peak again. Sentinels find a score there. And Ten's getting pretty hurt from that situation. Oof. Good trade back to just just chip damage being traded, but this is benefiting Sentinels, obviously. Goes long range, so Zelsis is still semi-healthy. 63 HP as Sentinels after the initial kill reset back towards C. We'll get the same scenario this time with more, more bodies up for Loud. Zekin trying to get the long range, couldn't work it with the Singer, uses a classic instead. Back and forth we go though with a fault line timing, Bucky close range, John Cutie. Not that Tan's at his back, but Elise has the trade. QCK, the only thing that he has now is a classic. Trying to find the opportune moment to walk inside the smoke. The backup from Tens, the turnaround, and then both of them swinging from extremities. Yeah. Well done by Sentinels. An opportunity there for Loud to get the upset. But Sentinels convert from their pistol. Loud, again, playing this composition that peaks a little bit with their bodies. Obviously, two is pushing there to get map control and see if they could have started to lean. But now they do have Sadak with guiding lights. They don't have to go as crazy. So we'll see what this gun round brings us. <laughs> like, wait a minute, that was a little too close for my comfort, says Kaplan. It's been a long night and a long day for the coach. <laughs> All right. Our first one towards Rubble. And a wide swing, too. The orb didn't even come up. Zekin gets the surprise kill onto Kawadzin. Knowing that the other one was behind the boxes, but TP the way. That's two E's. Forced to anchor solo. A double push from Loud to try to flank around towards C. That will be bit by Utility in a couple of seconds as Zelsis moves forward with the rest of the team. This flank is huge. Exactly. And actually, as Zelsis is moving forward, there's no alarm bot. It's not really activated. Here's that timing moving forward now. Is There you go. Move back towards the doorway. Alarm bot came up. And that spots at least one player. Sentinels are now ready for the backstab. John Cutie is the one that greets him on the corner of the boxes by Baby Door. One on one in that situation, door opening forward. Sentinels are looking pretty good here in round number three. Their bonus, less dancing it around. The peek out from Zelsis at Rubble. The push towards the spawn from second. A Sentinel score, the flawless. What?
are they doing? They keep opening the door. They still got the flank. It, they're just playing games out here right now as Loud tries to get back into the site. And Loud was having trouble. Sadak threw one of his, his flashes at Link stairs and it just found itself going into the wall because it was tried to be thrown through a smoke. Little things not working for Loud that they would have gained a bit of ground and Sentinels just biting back. Let's go, Zelsis. Absolutely feeling it out of his chair right now with the hype from the crowd. And we're in the ground, gun round, or round four, I should say. Guns for Sen, not for Loud. And Sentinels worried that this could be a round of trickery. Leave the spike and spawn for now as they do a bit of recon. The did first so. push, though, from Tui's here on Loud. Yeah, and did so with the recon prowling towards mm -hmm. the B main as well. Did catch a player, and as they go for the swing on mound, they once again see the Viper set up towards that C site. And definitely here, as you're seeing, Sentinels working that map quite well. Zels is standing up at the end of these rounds. Also is the hype man that you need for Sentinels to try to close this map number five. Wow. Yeah, really, we're showing the respect to Loud. Showstopper coming out. Creating that space on the lower by that you have, and Kowzi somehow manages to slip through the execution of Sentinels to get one pick with his Bucky. Nonetheless, the plant will still come down. Honestly, showstopper in. You know Sadak's not going to be too close with the judge if he has one that round. Yeah, you're right. Playing it safe, playing it strong. And they're looking to deny the audio on the retake, too. Yeah, that's going to hit so many bodies, even all four of them towards this B site. All Lau could do right now is just hold the back, waiting for that to dissipate. The wall comes up, thankfully, because Les is still alive. Big curveball, the double swing out of it. Saucy is going to fall. Trying to play the pulse plant here. Tui's jumps up on the ledge, starts the fuse instantly. We get the sprays on two kills. QCK then swinging out. There's not going to be enough time left. Standing. John Cutie's just staying alive and trying to force out Les towards him. Les falls back. Spike will explode. The round for Sentinels. Four for Sen. They do go down to one member, but the coffers are full. They've got so much money from the first four rounds here. The ultimates to come up. But we'll see this round again, pressuring into the site. You can see that Sentinels is not kidding around. Showstopper on a low buy round for Loud. They are securing these. Imagine if they didn't Showstopper. It came down to a 1v1. The site might have had a different play all the way through that round. Fist bumps all around. Zelsis as well still feeling hot out there. I think I read his lips there during, oh. a, during the replay. What did he say? He said, buy our capsule or something like that. Oh, true, true, true. You need to inspect more. Oh, my God. Into my soul right now. Get out of my head. I'm definitely intimidated, especially intimidated with the play style that we're currently seeing on Sentinels on the map number five. Again, we're talking about the tape that Sadak currently has against his opponents. And maybe just one look at the composition, one look at the plays, he could develop a playbook that could really anti-Sentinels in this last final map. But so far, we have four unanswered rounds for Sentinels. And this situation where Loud has gone into these early timeouts in his first two maps, remember, we definitely saw a one-sided affair for Sentinels as well. So Loud seems like they might be digging deep right now yeah. to answer back on their defensive half. This becomes interesting, right? It's not the, the raise and the fade nade here coming from Loud. So this is more of a firefight util hit, but Sen can run out and answer, right? They're not too deterred from making this happen unless they get nailed by that fault line. It's already coming out. TP went forward, though, look at tens. Double TP on both ends! They can't but stop it's it. winning that one. Low HP, door being opened. Sadak forced to fall back. Flash to try to get information. The Prowler falls up behind his second for three in the round. A site open for business, and Sentinels shuts down the defense. I won't say it's impossible, but you just saw how hard it is for Loud to actually control that space. With the majority of the util, they wanted to take it. Two members of Sentinels able to shut that down as Tens and Zekin go forward. Now they play the plant game all in tree. They should be able to trade each other here, but a good fault line could pick up a few. That's enough damage though for the assist. Last one now spotted. Snake bite not allowing Les to move even more forward behind that two versus one. <laughs> second snake bite. Nano Swarm too. So toxic. And second Nano Swarm coming down, wasting all of that time. Counter moving forward to tap on the spike. One has to run across. Easy kill. Crosshair placement, but Zelsis knows better. 
Then swings that off the timing. Five now. Four Sentinels. Crowd behind him. As Sentinels continue to build the confidence in the final map. And these rounds are a bloodbath. Loud's not getting the chance to save. Neither is Sen, but they're coming up with the frags. They're coming up with the round wins. And John Cootie is currently sitting on 9,000 credits. They can be buying each other if they want to. They're staying away from an operator. Sentinels is keeping a fast-paced game to not let Loud breathe right now. Loud into a big Sheriff, Guardian, and Vandal round. They're stretching the money thin here, and they go again for Rubble Play. Keep doing it, why not? But this time we're answering back for Loud. Lots of utility to try to clear back towards Rubble. Two is moving forward. That's the Sheriff's going to work now for Loud. Answering back, it's Asi. But they pull back from it, dropping a spike in the process. It comes down to the man right here, the hype man, that made it behind enemy lines and is trying to catch the rotate. They refine the hit. They said it wouldn't be oh. impossible, the but it seekers, was pretty hard. Too late. The pick from Zelsis opening it up, up towards the A site so they can pick towards the rubble. But the backside's about to come forward from Les. But he lost Kalenzine in the process to jump for it. Backstab there onto Zelsis. Spike Elise is picked up by John Cutie with the pit available. Viper on Viper, both pits also available. Comes down to who has the better read, the better positioning. It's John Cutie! Absurd momentum right now. Electric from Sentinels. The players are feeling it and they are delivering it to each other in these moments as well. What a round. Loud again, refined the A, a rubble hit. They get it right. But the round still goes in the favor of Sens as they're able to organize a hell of a flank to come in and completely pick apart Loud. Four ultimates now ready for Loud here. Three for Sentinels, an explosive round here on round seven as the Odin unleashes from Zelsa's hands. They want to keep doing it for Loud. They had some sort of result there for the control they had towards Rubble, but the thing is they had a lower buy. This time they wanted to do it with weapons. Sentinels could have been lucky with the spray from Zelsis from the A entrance, but that means you have no defenders towards the C site, allowing for Sentinels to be wow. exactly where they posted up at the beginning of this round. Open up the kill up the last. Showstopper in, does not get the contact. Cusick is just around the corner. Run it back, out and activate it. Big curveball, the headshot onto tens. Rolling Thunder also available here for Kawazin. And it's just to try to push them back and allow Akusuke to move forward for another pick. Lockdown available at the beginning of this round yep. for Zelsis as they had to reset, regroup, and rethink. This would be a wild round. They lose less first and are able to answer back now. Loud gonna win this one from a 4v5 conversion, possibly. They correctly rotate. Run. And the just the ruse. They're gonna be sticking together though, so it doesn't matter. Oh, it does. You're right, it does. They second guess it, and now they're gonna be rotating together. Power in numbers, left. but the wrong site. And now it has to come down to a perfect timing from Sasi. The flash actually did not spot Zelsis. He hears the footsteps. Once Sasi gets this plant, it'll pull the rotate back. But Zelsis is overthinking it, overpeaking, oh, and gets denied right away. Spike planted. Saucy had this chance before on Sunset. That was that wingman plant we saw when he was on the Gecko. Does he have the timing here to get behind his opponents? Hearing the audio, hearing the stampede of Loud go by him. A deja vu hears the footsteps, but this time, the dream's been learned. It's what? been red. But Saucy wakes up how it seen. A two versus one, paranoia hits him. Trying to get the spray across, at least gets that second kill, but Lau will get the defuse. Loud find it. They need this round. Sentinel still has so much money, but Loud needed to stop the bleeding. They were hemorrhaging rounds one after the other. Ultimates are ready for Sentinels, so they may as well, or they might just take this back in their favor with what they have. Liking B with this setup, we've seen them hit B with Nightfall with what they have, and Tens can really mess around with the spawn TP if he gets it. What a round from Loud. Playing that one together, rotating correct, but they know they have a long road ahead of them to collect the rest of these rounds in the first half. Here's that B hit we were talking about from Sentinels, not afraid to just send it. Rare hit towards that B site. That paranoia is gonna blind too, but close range still gets the kill with the Guardian. Q also moving forward. Aftershock forcing Sentinels to push forward. 
But it's traded back and forth. Settles back on the board. Dewey's answering it right back. Hit is down. Counter hit, hit coming out of defenders. Less at low HP though. Kajon Cutie still at full with armor. It's like Sherber. Let's go. Oh, a shot outside. John Cutie finds one. Is he true? One on one though. Les has that snake bite. John Cutie playing all the way on the outside, letting that pit down. Les doing the same wall up, tap on the spike. John Cutie, the sprays on the first. It's halfway, a little Whoa. bit of a tap, trying to stick it. It's going to release it now. Gets the kill. Tries to go back for the defuse. Will he get it? He will not. Less than a second. But John Cutie wins the one on one. 7 1. Sentinels up. They pull it back in their favor. We talked about the B hit, how hard it is. Once you get that Nightfall in, the close members on the defensive side playing B cannot orchestrate around any audio. They're deafened, they're trying to play off full reaction, and that usually means you're getting met with the utility that follows up after the Nightfall, and you are falling. What a round, good pressure, good play. 7-1 Sen here, it's gonna be a low buy again for Loud, which means Sen, should be able to pick up this round. And as we say that though, Kawanzine's been getting a lot of value out of this Bucky so far, slipping through towards the seaside hits, and the Sheriff's has always been really good on QCK less in twoies. And walking towards QCK are Sentinels after doing some initial noise towards the yep. site. Do they grab mound control now though? Yes, perfect from Loud. They can start to move the rest of the map here. They need to get a faster read on Sentinels. The retake They're from Loud is amazing with They're their flashes. But they gotta be in position. The dog came out too, controlled towards Mound. There's that instant rotate from Kawanzine and Sadak. All the rest of the team. They're still under a minute. QCK under initial pressure. Orb now being picked up. Pain Shell's moving forward. Jusuke gets the wall bang. It's a bait for the bucket to move forward, but Sekin was ready for that one. Curveball on the right. Tried to look for the safety as John Cuto was able to make it back, but Sadak pinches from the back. 3v3. But once again, the better buy is for Ooh. the attackers. Yeah. Sassi pushing forward against Dewey's. A plant safe now towards the right left. side of the site. Sadak got a Guardian. Guardian picked up. Less moving forward. Watching their angles, jumping out. Guardian shot does not connect. And instantly, both players of Vlau fall with the crossfire setup from the Sentinels. Dominating now the attacking side. Dominating just like he did on the first two maps of Sentinels. They're definitely really looking like they're running towards the victory of this final map. This is incredible right now from Sentinels. One enemy remaining. We always pray a Sadak, the five games, the long, arduous process of having to restrat every map, figure out your opponents. He's been there, he's done that. Amazing to see how Sentinels is molding to the situation. John Cutie continues to call well, and we know Zelsa is just on the backside of those calls, adding so much information. And Sentinels could do whatever they want right now. They really can. They're going back into that pressure towards the rubble side. We're like, okay, well, when we have these big gun rounds, they might try to pressure on that side. Sentinels could work. Now the B yeah. moving back towards C. And this is pistol repeat, right? Yeah. This is exactly what Sentinels did on pistol round. It's a, a sure grab on orb. Now they pick up the spike and they can decide what they want to do. Haven't had to worry about this A rubble pressure at all, really. They just let it happen and make sure they watch the flank. Looking forward now, Sen has only but what's in front of them for this B take. Having John Cutie with the spike back there makes me think this isn't a full hit though. No, this is big right now for Loud. You had Sadat, we talked about agents that needs to get information. He dogged out at the 115, then goes for Seekers at the one minute, even to run it back to try to get the late round and even to pick off the Zelsis. Denied by John Cutie. Still an opportunity here for Sentinels to pivot away if they want to, and it's starting here. Sasi's moving forward, but he's waited by Tui's. For the rest, it's just second throwing the pain shells. And Sentinels move, moving yep. up towards the B side for a plant. Saucy, Saucy solo clears Haunt right on A rubble. Pushes back with the C's, and again, there's still an audible to be called here from Sentinels. They haven't finished to where they're going. It might be B in the end, though. Yeah, 14 seconds left. It's now coming in towards this B side, but there's still players here. Four players looking to flood back from Loud in the back Ten of the spawn. Left. Forward position from Saucy on the top of the heavens. Winning just behind the smoke. Here's the footsteps rotating across on the back of the spawn. Now as it dissipates, there's the contact. Paranoia was a little bit too late. Yes. Henson moves forward, though, and Tui's answer is right back. It's back and forth. 
a Congo line of kills. But the advantage for allowed. Door opening, QCK looking for the flank, clearing out the front B. Both players of Sentinels anchoring inside the side. The curveball turned away by John Cutie. The ADS for the trade. Second now, Satchel available to try to get the diffuser off the plant. But he's going to swing out first and knows now that they have wow. to commit. Two Acers ready for it though and fights back, allowing Loud to get the defuse. What a necessary round. And they actually focus to his ultimate there. He will get it. Prioritizing a bit of the map control. Being able to get Tui's pushed up on A rubble and then teleported into a retake for the team if necessary. Loud, a very much needed round. Every single one of these last rounds needs to be theirs. With the pressure, Sentinels is adding to this fifth and final map of the grand final. Two more rounds, a possibility here. <laughs> Size of relief. And now they focus on another round. And he ults on deck. Not really for, for Loud. But they are going to go ahead, take that rubble control, and try to just get a better read on Sentinels. They need every bit of the beginning of these rounds in their favor, Loud does. So that's a pickup. One away from Orb now for a second. Or ultimate. And if anything here, they have that ultimate available for Tui's if he wants to go for that TP in the back of the C site to help. And it's being pinged out by Sentinels. Sentinels putting pings all the way through the back of spawn here, and it's right over the members of Loud. Face your fear. Here we go. Nightfall. That's where they're trying to ping, where they want to initiate the nightfall. Pain shells thrown by Zekin. Space has been gained. Prowler pushing back towards the waterfall. QCK still anchoring Fight behind the pillar. After that plant, though, Showstopper available by Zekin. Beautiful flash does not allow for him to get space off the Showstopper. Does some damage onto QCK. Down to 5 HP. Boombot about to come out through the smoke. The Paranoia countered by Loud from the back of the spawn. John Cuda gets a snake by kill onto QCK as the Doc has to move in with the rest. But they're getting delayed by the utility of Sentinels on the post plan. A 5 versus 3. Make that a 4 versus 3 advantage for the Sentinels as well. As Les and the rest cannot move forward for Loud. It's finally, it's Tens that gets picked off. Two Nanoswarms on to the spike, the late available for Celsius. And there's the pop, and now they're moving forward, but finally they got rid of that Util. It's at a halfway. The swing out two is with the second tap, and Sassy gets that pick. Holy close call by both squads. Last round. Seeing that hand. play come to fruition for Sentinels, I started thinking you guys planted for not mound, and you guys got you got guys outside the site. Loud. Also, recognizing the plant position. And for a defense, that means they have some members in sight. Nobody plants down on that platform and all play mound. Loud assessing the situation beautifully and dropping the members they needed. Holy moly. Not enough, though. It's tough for them. It is tough for sure. They're able to come back, Sentinels, even though they planted on that platform and get the, get the round. Oof. Zekin. Play. Zekin is on fire. Superstar now for Sentinels. Continues to lead the charge on all of these hits of the attack. Although on the other side, we did see the push from QCK out towards the A main. Evening up the tally. Weapon upgraded at this corner. Looking to get upgraded. As Sentinels goes for the plant, but there's that backstab. Wow. John Cutie with the plant gets the pit. That's going to make it difficult now for Loud to retake. Second. He's farming. Cannot be... Sorry. <laughs> All right. Very cool. Uh, moving in now. Less QCK to do what they can here. HP going to be going way down. Oh, and short and close. Swings across. Bam. John Q's alone. One-on-one -on -one tap on the spike. John Cutie just staying outside of it. Gambling that he's not going to stick it. Just got spotted down to 11 HP. Blazewell now up. Another tap. John Cutie forced to run in. But now there's not enough time. QCK with another tap. Got it. John Cutie with the rest of the patience that Sentinels have. They finish the half at 10-2. What an incredible first half final match from Sentinels. Still on fire this late in the day, this late through all these strategies. John Cutie and Zelsis still have a strap book to flip the pages through.
Loud having so much trouble figuring out what is the entry on this Sentinel's composition, how to get to the entry with all of their members. Sentinels picks them apart one by one as they go for the rotations, they get into position. And here again, just the time game being danced around. Sentinels have been in so are in control so much throughout this series. And now the final map, a 10-2. 10-2 with three rounds remaining for the Sentinels to be crowned the kickoff champions. What a call here as we'll hopefully see what the desk has to say about this play style of Sentinels. So much to talk about, Van Silly, because we're seeing some really good ideas from Sentinels, and they're really, Ender, I think, taking advantage of the fact that they have identified some weaknesses yeah. in they, Loud's comp. They just, they're destroying Loud. They realize yeah. there's nothing to stall them out on the C site. Usually you have to play those early rounds to, you know, bust down some Killjoy yeah, utility, yeah, yeah. pivot in the mid-rounds. John QT wasn't even challenged in that regard. So many opens was just a contest mound and immediately burst into the site. They were dominating and getting out of their chairs with every round win. I would love watching this evolve, too, because I the captain's having a good time, but first it was L6 who was getting up from round one, popping off across the stage. Look at that. All of a sudden, vibes he's merchant. getting up as well. There's a sale on vibes. Dude, he's got him. Everyone's buying into it. It also helps that they're just frying yeah. right now. Like, they don't even have to really mid round and do all that stuff. They're just like landing all their shots. Everything is working for them. This feels just like Split last night. Sentinels are back, baby. They are back from 2021. They are putting on a show here, grinding so many games they played more than anyone else. And now playing the maximum in the finals. They are out here with the crowd and the fan support behind them. And a 10 to the half. Real quick though, I want to see what does Loud do going into this half? Do they have a chance to come back in, Ender? It is going to be almost impossible. Possibly hard. Down 10 2, but also GB, they've done it before. Back at Champions last year, they lost to Loud. They win the first two games or lose the first two games, win the next two, lose the final. Lock in. It was the same exact story, and it's looking like it once again here today. We'll see if that's uh, history is going to repeat itself rather to send it back over to the casters. Thank you, GB. And yes, indeed, it's decided here on this half, but Sentinels have a big cushion right now. Winning this pistol will be everything, and Loud has an uphill battle to fight a steep 1-2 as they take the attack. Pistol round underway, and it comes down to this player right here for QCK. They don't have a composition that allows for them to do the explosion on the map control that they're trying to get the site control that Zekin yeah. currently has for Sentinels. So how will Loud work the attack now with this type of comp? Here. Looking to make as little noise as possible. Looks like they might catch a paranoia nade here if they do get themselves into position. Right behind Rubble. Oh, dear. Oh, the wall came down as well. Paranoia moving forward. A one for one. Make that a two for one in favor of the Sentinels. Control towards the Rubble as well. Hit by the Seas. Killed by Tens. Again with the hat trick. Multi kills this whole series. For the star player, not only being Zekin, but also Tens. Finding comfort in this role as Omen and dominating this kickoff so far. Tui's with the backstab. Two for his name. Zelsis is low on HP, but it's a backstab for backstab. John Cutie is also there looking to move 30 behind. Seconds left. Signs to think otherwise. Looks like Sentinels wants to give up the spike. At least for now. They get to safety on this one. Read the play so far. Can't count out Kui's the though. Spike. They hear, yeah, Zelsus hears that run. John Cutie hits the heaven. Shadows. Getting into position. So this will be money here Ten for Loud. Left. If Loud do lose, they're going to be buying <laughs> next round. Expect the buy from Loud. Sentinels will too. And it looks like we're going hard onto this one. 11 to 2 now. Do they go for it? There's a stinger. There's a few. Let's see the replay on the round. Looking at how they orchestrated this, it was a lot on the fade. Whatever fade could see from Link, whatever Saucy could look, was then the hit from Tens on Paranoia. Everybody then let's into go, it. Second went down first in that, and they knew the play would still go through. That as well, the play that you saw from John Cutie, the snake bite, yeah. and also spraying in, knowing that it was gonna be a plant that's gonna be unorthodox, just trying to get it down for twoies, and still manages to get that pick. Oh, Got a go fragging fast. IGL calling perfectly for Sentinels, and steps up for these kills when he needs to. The perfect piece to the puzzle right now for Sentinels to close this series two rounds away, as loud as you mentioned, Rib, is forced on a buy.
A main control. Prowler just went through B for Sentinels, so they have a bit of an idea of how long the timing will be. And now the Trailblazer alerts them a little bit more. Spike is at B, or sorry, C here for Loud. Guardian does get the hit onto the jump spot, but thankfully Sadak is there with the heal. Less is back and topped. And now they're pivoting towards the C site, as you mentioned, because of that pressure and that control that Sentinels currently has on that A site. Utility being broken on that C set as well. Snake bite to delay. Snake bite to push John Cutie away as well. First content now in the back of the pillar of that C set. It Celsius with the stinger out of bullets, flashed and pulled away. And now it forces Sentinels to play the retake. They're, they got to stay in sight for this plant. It's going to get real sketchy if they're all outside on mound. So you see them piling into water here. They still have the flank from Tui's. But. Looks like Tens is ready for that one. He's thinking Reached about it. So far, it. taps the door, or looking for the paranoia. The backstab oh missed the opportunity to just close him down. C's being pulled out after shot to try to push them back once again. Sasi finally trying to lead the charge, but Kalenzine strikes first. It's back and forth, but Louder still holding the pulse plan. Celsius is low on HP, blocked Ooh. by Kalenzine with the classic. It's up to only one more member. Tens, the time against them. Runs back out through the smoke, tries to make it expensive in the wow. long game, but Loud holds down the pulse plant on their force buy. Sentinels feels the sting on that round, an almost necessary win. Game's over if Loud dropped the stinger by round, but no, they persevere. They find a way to shred Sentinels, and then they low plant in the site, knowing stingers cannot win that fight from mound, and they cause chaos on Sentinels' retake absolutely swarming the members of Sen, taking them down. So a few free upgrades for, upgrades for Loud here. Sentinels back down on the low buy. Loud needs to carry these rounds for just about forever. We'll see what happens. A pressure will be given for now is it's a retake for Sen. And Loud, a lot of control on the map here. Really playing it slow to not make a mistake. Back and forth as they tempt any fight. Forever definitely seems like very long when you're trying to find room to breathe here. Yeah. Trailing behind by eight rounds are loud and already look how early these trail lasers are coming from, but it forces out the push there you off go. the lower buy that you have from Sentinels through the smoke. Two easy is ready for that, drops them both with the stinger. It allows for them to pivot across, but look at this reposition from John Cutie. He decided to fall at behind his teammates' bodies, the paranoia to come out. It's at least one kill. And out of that, Loud has full control of B, full control of the map. And now control of the spike planted. Spike planted. That's gonna give him the contact, yeah. not even need it. Well done here. Loud converts two wow. rounds in a row. Sentinels could not get the surprise play. Remember though, if we're going back to the basics as well of this map, a three-site map you've mentioned here, Riv. Very similar to Haven. Great ways to be able to default across the map. Yes. Great ways to actually pull rotations away and get a very strong attack side. So Sendles showed a very good 10-2 half on their attack, but you definitely know that Loud has what it takes and can do the same thing. I mean, they just pulled off a full stinger 2-2-1 two, two, fake strat, right? Yeah, anything is on the table right now. Back to guns on both sides. 11 to 4 is no pressure for Loud. They're feeling the 0 0 on the scoreboard as they oh. take shots. Send tens, however, starts us off. The haunt head information. Tens just went for a tap while looking at the mini map and got the kill. Paranoia to push him away, trying to fall back, but there's a snake bite to not allow him from that deep cover. But at least his teammates are there. Cover going out. A little back and forth. Sentinels will regain position of the rubble area after grabbing one. So the 5v4 conversion now on Sen's shoulders to get the W on this round. This is where Sasi comes in, or I'm sorry, Sadak comes into play. The mid round call. What can happen? Double take on both sides of that mid area. Tui's just from mid. And they're waiting on less. Maybe a little more info, maybe a push. But Sen have not been giving that push. Heard the jumps, the haunt here. Yep. Tui's forced to break it and give his position away. They have this rolling thunder for Kalenzine. He made it all the way down towards the bottom. And as the Nano Swarms come out, they could just wait for that timing. <laughs> All coming through gets cancelled as Tui's is trying to find somebody towards that site. 30 seconds left. But once again, Sentinels playing the retake. Waited out the Molly's going for the plant. Another plant that considers that Loud has to stay inside Celsius with the Odin. The C's got him to just spray through. 
And now Snake fights to delay, and that's no rolling Ooh. thunder to push him back. There's only Ow. 12 seconds left on the clock. Forcing to go Ten for the stick. Left. But the sprays are not coming in this time around. Plant is down. The push from Tui's does not get the surprise kill there on the Sentinels. Tens on a rotate back from the spawn. Hot comes through. Sadak is all alone. Sadak gets two, but gets dropped right after. Oh. Sentinels with the defuse, and Sentinels around the way of leading this series. Oh my gosh, that's the defuse, they go for John Cutie, or no, Zelsis, that's going to be an all door towards the lockdown, anything that helps them secure these rounds from Loud. Loud is able to get into the sights, they do it as a death ball, they squeeze in, but the plants have been so tough for Loud to get in a good position, the low plants just on platform are not allowing them good defensive setups, Sentinels comes in and just swarms from all angles in the end. 12 to 4 now. We are going to still have that Odin online for the side of Sentinels. But Loud are Eight able to present now up. with full Vandals. Just low armor on Tui's in this Rolling Thunder. They're going to fight for a rubble control. It's going to be all about the map before the fights first. They have to play this round in layers if Loud wants to get through Sen. Do you hear a little bit of damage being done here through the smoke, but it's inflicted onto Loud. Sadak and Les tagged a little bit. Remember, this Rolling Thunder available, not used on the seaside when they thought Second. they had control. This time, though, Zekin gets the opener four kills away. We thought you would have a Rolling Thunder open up the A site, but instead, it's reopening the door and sneaking QCK around. They have no idea what's behind them. They don't know if somebody's in Baby Door. They don't know if somebody's now behind them at A Main. They have to move, and Loud can only go forward here. That Rolling Thunder still ready, could cover all of B. They have QCK just lurking, waiting, but nobody from Sentinels is stepping into the danger zone right now. They're waiting for a plant knowledge. Loud just with their regular stop and go under the pressure. Out of elimination, Holy. yet at the brink of elimination does these plays. QCK trying to go for the hero one, trying to see if he can catch one off guard. Got your trail. At least to get the plant down. 5v3, rolling thunder, prepped and ready from the tree position. They're gonna actually try to rotate a little bit around. Tui's can have a big flank in the end. A few of these seconds being wasted getting to the spike, but Sen still have a lot of time on the clock. Important to keep Kalanzine alive right now for the rolling thunder, and he also has Aftershock holding the tree is the most important position, but Sentinels are looking to fight right back. There's the aftershock. There's a swing out from Tens, but gets denied. And now the tap on that spike. Tui's dropping one. It's a two versus two. Right inside, trying to stick it. Another one to fall. It's all up to Zek, who does get the kill. Trying to stick the spike. And it gets to the fuse with the rainbow clutch. And Sentinels are going to be America's kickoff champions. Look at his face! Sentinels! Your gauntlet run is over! And you have completed it victoriously. Playing just about the same amount of games they played in the regular season of 2023 here in kickoff to kickoff playoffs and now grand finals. Sentinels <laughs> had it all and they gave it all. The fans are happy. Zek in there with a stick to fuse and how better to get it than a stick to fuse in the site with your opponents still on the other side. It couldn't have gone any other way. Sentinels used it so many times to get to this point. It definitely shows the preparation and how ready they were under these pressure moments that could still stay calm and stick a spike on a 1v1, but look at them. Sentinels crown here, the victors of America's in this kickoff win. It was actually a coveted title of well last year by winning America's. This team reformed under the helm of John Cutie as the IGL, founding, founding the partnership with Kaplan as well. We don't build this story. And let's talk about that. John Cutie obviously in the scene, knowing some of the minds that he plays against, but being able to step on the VCT stage and outmind the best. That's greatness. And now let's toss it here to Spix and the winners, Sentinels. Riot Games Arena, give it up for your America's kickoff champions. It is Sentinels.
second, congratulations. Not only is this a major win for Sentinels as an organization, you are such an instrumental part of it. You are one of the best players in this entire kickoff event. We have Mama Zekin here, we have Grandma Zekin here. Please, a word for not only your family, but also your fans. Uh, Mom, Leela, I love you guys. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, all the fans, thank you so much for coming out to support, whether it's online or in person, we couldn't do it without you. Thank you. Now moving on, Tens, you are the only member on this team that remembers when Sentinels was at the international events, when Sentinels was lifting trophies. It has been three years since that moment, but finally, you will be going to Madrid as the America's Kickoff Champions. What does this mean for you to have seen your team's journey and make it this far? Yeah, um, I'm just really proud of the team. Uh, appreciate all the fans that have been cheering us on. It's been amazing. Um, it's just been an experience. So, yeah, I'm excited. I'm sure the fans are very, very excited to cheer for you in Spain as well. So thank you very much. Sati. This has to feel so surreal because not only, of course, are you the America's Kickoff Champions, you did so taking down Loud, your former team. Loud, the team that seems to beat all of their teammates that leave. I mean, they just have a crazy history of being able to do so. But finally, you're able to take them down. You're able to take, that, take down Sadak. Tell us how much more special this means for you. I mean, it's really special. First, it's my official my first official title on Sentinels, so I'm really happy because of it. You know, I'm, uh, no, uh, I'm a Brazilian, so I know like this means a lot for me. Uh, I don't really care. Like it could be loud, it could be NRG, but for me the title is, is special for itself because it was a high expectation on myself and our team last year, and I'm so glad that we finally came back and we got the win. Absolutely, and you were such a huge part of that. Congratulations, Sassy. And now we have our in-game leader, John Cutie! John, you tweeted it yourself. There's no such thing as failure, just delayed success. From playing in Morocco, moving to Canada, impressing everyone with your time at Ghost Gaming, barely not making it in, uh, in Ascension when you were part of M80, and now rejoining hands with Coach Kaplan, lifting this trophy here, winning America's kickoff. Tell us what all of this means for you in your career. It means a lot. I know where to start, but it means a lot. I've worked so hard. Uh, I've spent so much time just working. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm like, I'm just living alone in LA, just working so hard. I have a vision and I've seen this happen before it happened. So I don't know, I don't know what to say. You're an inspiration to both aspiring and current pros alike. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and congratulations. It's amazing what has been done here today. And Zelsis, Zelsis, my man. Zelsis, you have been telling us that every loss before against Lod was a fluke, you know, and, and that you were very, very confident in this rematch. There's no question that They've really made it difficult, but finally, you get your revenge for the loss last time around. You are the champions, and you get to go abroad once again after the last time was Rikovic back in 2021. It's been three years. Uh, I mean, I'm just happy by the Sentinels bundle. Thank you. That was my whole goal. That was my whole goal. Um, but not really, like, beating loud. I thought, like, you know, it was slipping between our fingers. Um, every map, like, we were just grinding it out. We knew, like, it's, you know, John has a saying, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So we knew we were bound to win one map. Cap says all the time. Um, I'm just really happy to be loud. And, like, yeah, I'm happy that we have shown that we're the best NA team. So it just feels good. <laughs> You heard it from Zelsis himself. Make sure to buy the Sentinel bundle. And now Coach Kaplan, you tweeted this yesterday that simply making it to Madrid was not good enough because you knew how much it would mean to take the win here and get those crucial points ahead of champs. You've done it. All the hard work, all the stress, all the practice has finally paid off. And now you guys are the kickoff champions. Tell us what's going through your head right now. I'm so lucky and so proud of my team. I'm lucky to be with them and they mean the world to me. The fans mean the world to me. I 
what an insane journey this kickoff has been. We played so many games and it, it, they're, you know, not only are we the best America's team right now, but I mean, we're really the best America's team. They're a real team. They really believe in each other. They really, they know how to win and lose as a team. They, uh, I love them all. <laughs> I can't, I, I can't. Congratulations. What an amazing, amazing victory. And of course, last but not least, we have Coach Drew over here. Coach, you have you have seen a lot with this org. You've seen the ups and downs, and finally all the pieces are fitting. All, the players are playing the best. The team is looking amazing. The team synergy is there. What does this moment mean for you? It's uh, validating. Like, we worked harder than anyone else this off season, coming into the season two, so. I think we deserve this, you know? Like, I, I, we had a hard year last year and we learned a lot. We came to this year and we set ourselves really well for the offseason to come into the preseason. And yeah, we get the important three points for the, uh, you know, for the, the, the grand scope of things and we go to Madrid. So. Validation is certainly the word. Congratulations once again, Drew. And last but not least, Riot Games Arena, give it up one last time for your America's Kickoff Champions. It is the If there's one thing you can always guarantee from an NA crowd is useless USA chants just popping up <laughs> out of nowhere, even though there's a Moroccan and a Canadian on the team. Amazing stuff there. Seems like they had a good time, too. It's been a, a long day, but boy, oh boy, this was an intense game. And it's kind of crazy, though, that like at the end, it, it just felt like uh, Sentinels just hit a win button and then just kept going. Like, they never really stopped. It was the series last night. Yeah. Almost, yeah. almost to a T, obviously a little bit longer it took us a little bit more to get there but yeah, yeah, you got you got to the last game and Celsius just said all right we're done we're we're, we're done here let's wrap this yeah. up and they just snapped I, I think he spent more time out of his seat than actually in the seat Celsius <laughs> <That's> because <laughs> yeah. the rounds were so fast and they yeah. played so few <laughs> and Tyler like but but this Sentinels team I mean you heard it from them this this is the first time that Sentinels has really been a cohesive team since the last time we saw tens at an international event that he qualified for. They have worked so hard yeah. for this moment. There are so many players that we're getting to see make their big return. It's been a long time without Tens, without Saucy going to international events, without Zek in the last time he was with Exit. These are top level players that you expect to succeed. And I mean, even Zelsis returning, he, he's been talked about so much yeah. as like the best possible teammate you could have in North America to pick up. And he, he's made it back again. He's built another team up. It, it's amazing to see. I, I really did appreciate what Coach Kaplan said, though, about them being a team, right? Because mm. that was a problem. You mentioned it just now about how, like, the previous iterations of Sentinels just never really felt cohesive. Didn't really feel like they were, uh, like, just a team, plain and simple. It just felt like a collection of people trying to figure it out. But you're really seeing it here now. And, and I think it's just because you got to have a bunch of people that 100%. are just bought into whatever the system is. And they managed to achieve that with these five players. They've got an amazing system. And, and Kaplan knew exactly who he wanted to bring into that system, right? The fact that he gets John QT to it's rejoin huge. him on this team after John QT failed to qualify. There's a world where he he qualifies with M80 to VCT, to Americas, and isn't on they the win Sentinels two more maps. Rosters. Yeah, they win two more maps. There's also a world where maybe Kaplan isn't looking for a new IGL, isn't looking for that player. Does yeah. John QT even have a spot? He deserves it, but does he get it? I don't know. The fact that the stars aligned and we get this Sentinels roster is almost a miracle in itself, and what we saw today was amazing. In the interview with, we had with Kaplan yesterday, he, he was saying that, that John QT is like his best friend, the two mm -hmm. of them. They spent so much time together back That's when big. they were on Ghost. Back then, they were, they, they, were, they were innovating. They were head on the meta. They looked like one of the best teams. It didn't work out then, but now they're back with an even better roster around them and have made it work. And that story is just so cool to see come to a conclusion. Two people reuniting who have a very, very distinct idea of how they want to play the game and putting that to execution with some amazing players around them. Yeah. Well, and I think it's tournament runs like these that build, this is what builds a team, yeah. yes. right? Like going through the gauntlet. They you played through. so much more Valorant than Anyone, no one else was close to and, the amount of games they played. And it's not even just this tournament. Yeah. When Drew said uh, 
nobody has worked harder. And anybody can say that, right? And every team feels like they've worked harder than everyone else. Yeah. But they've played more off-season tournaments than anyone else. they played more rounds and more maps in this tournament than anyone else. They really have played more, yeah. and they've worked harder than anyone else. And I think you saw the fruit of that today. Yeah, it really illustrates the importance of, of that off-season, of that time, you know. But this is it. This is who will be going to Madrid. We have now settled in the Americas region. The final two teams, it's going to be, of course, Loud and Sentinel. Sentinel's going into this one with that winner's feeling, which has to feel like a freaking uplifting spirit off of them, man, because it's been weighing them down Especially for Especially after years. last year. For the players who have for been real. on this roster since then, it, it, it has to mean the world. And I'm just so excited for Madrid because I feel like this is an opportunity to see a tournament where so many different yeah. teams are playing so many different styles. You have a yes. team like Keiko who, who's list. playing like, like Yoru Fade comps on multiple different maps. Who's pulling out the, a tier two duelist from the worst team in Challengers North America <laughs> and winning EMEA. And owning. You, you have the Chinese League coming into play for the first time. You have a VCT Pacific qualification without DRX showcasing a, a rookie on Gen All I'm going to say is hot take. Here. This could be one of our best tournaments ever. It's going to be the most fun. It's going to be the most fun. And let me Absolutely. sell you two matchups. The best matchup in the tournament, for my money, Sentinels versus Gen G. Oh, yes. But the <laughs> yes. actual best matchup, if you want to see a clash of two ridiculous styles, it is Loud with their no dive, double smokes, triple initiator, and Carmine Corp on split. If they are playing their triple audio denial, Yoru plus Omen nonsense, that match will be the most entertaining Valorant match of all time. I don't care. Hear me out. Sentinels versus k the most clouded <laughs> <laughs> team you could possibly have be against crazy. literally the entire country of France. Yeah. The uh, internet will stop. Let's not forget, heretics are out there as well, yeah. and we're going to be in Spain. They're going to have a Spanish crowd. <laughs> Dude, the ridiculous thing, like, sorry, I just have to say this for a second because of EMEA being there last year, like, those two teams were the worst yeah, teams yeah. in the NBA last year. And like, it's Sentinel, not the worst team last year, but they were they were down there they last year. <laughs> and yeah, then they rebuilt. It yeah. is it is an insane turnaround for so many of these different organizations, and it shows the the roster moves in the off season, and also Even like Doug was saying, like the work these teams did in the off season, the unique styles, yeah. the fantastic gameplay, the cohesion, and Sentinels, they're the best at that in America. And I think this we have to highlight that this very well may be the best Valorant we've had. Oh, yeah. Ever. Yeah, where parity is at an incredible place. Anybody can beat anybody. Yeah. There are new faces and new names showing up. You've got guys like Narrate, you know, the story he's had. You've got, we've got a field where we don't have Fnatic, where we don't have uh, NRG, where we don't have DRX. Like, this is... No EG players qualified. It's wild. No like, Navi. This feels like... Again, this feels like the best Valorant we've had I feel like, to this point. I think it's safe to say we have officially entered into a new era of Valorant. Ooh, ah, yes. Yeah, you know, and then you, when you do the voiceover, you just make sure you add that very dramatic pause. <laughs> Thank you. But that's it. That's a wrap on kickoff, guys. I mean, across all of the regions, I think it's safe to say this has been the, just such a fun tournament to watch. Oh, for sure. It's very safe to say. Yeah. It's very safe to say that, and I think that's why I chose it. Uh, but genuinely, though, we thank you all so much for tuning in each and every week. There are people who are watching every single region. They're just enjoying all the Valorant that's out there, and the good news is you won't have to wait much longer because Madrid is just around the corner. We're going to be back in April as well for stage one. There's so much happening here at the Riot Games Arena. It's been such a joy to be a part of it. And for myself and the entire team, we thank you all so much for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you in Madrid. And welcome back to VCT Americas. Anything can and will happen. The format is new this year. Those points are now important. So every game, every stage of Americas really matters for this game. Players in his face, lots of chances, lots of opportunities. And it is beautiful. Really off there, MW still backing away round the back. There we oh, go. He's got it. There we he's go. He's got it. It's got to be Oxy to watch out for. Jareth in goes first contact. Nice shot there from Oxy. The backstab. Where's the communication? There's a third! Oxy on fire! An assist from the wingman to get the clap onto RG, allowing Oxy to get his second ace of the 
DCT Americas. We're going to show you two tweets on the board. One is real, one is Play fake. Maybe you think that's smart, lol. <laughs> I love it. The second one is at Valley Sports NA. I cannot stand this meme person. I am muting the stream. Up top, but it's smoked off. Tens sticking to the fuse, running into it. Kawazine. The stick That's three. The That's stick four. Will he get the ace? Yes, he will. Two fast ones ripped some apart. Sadak still alive with the short <laughs> team. Pick it up, son. Get the upgrade. Get the bloody man. You know, losing Aspas, that's a hole. That is a massive gap. If you see Aspas on a roster, that is a powerhouse team immediately. I want to get some more to your opponents. Aspas is just dancing around. He's KZing around the map. Wait a minute. Actually, I'm being told by, we have a new game. Oh, just because Suga's here, we figured we'd do something fun. It's a new one and a new pun. Crew Truce Ally. Oh, yes. God, and Gosh has got a little treat for me, haven't you? Yeah, it's a little this morsel. Is, this is what G2 were doing in their activation <laughs> earlier. Taste test? Yeah, taste mm. test. Okay. How yeah. does Brimstone's cake taste? So will that play a disadvantage, <laughs> Kesnit! <laughs> Just Kesnit things. I have to ask you one last question. The hair, the gecko green. What are we thinking? Thoughts, do we like it? Personally, not a fan, but I... <laughs> Reveals a two. Sees the reposition good. lined up, actually lined up entirely, but it is that crossfire. No way! EU brings it to the 1v1. It will be a monstrous clutch, and indeed it is! Okay, that explains that considered that on the 12th that G2 were beating 100 Thieves in the scrim. Well, now we're going circle. But, now you, but you're going to put them higher because they were beating them 10 to 7. Apoc is really far out. So Johnny P gets that kill. The pod is time and he's been patient. He hasn't moved at all. Both from up top, Johnny P before on the Mario round. It. He gets it! The ace from Johnny P! The Fury EG, EG, where's EG? They, they, uh, 6 2 against an unknown team. Ah, well, it's the unknown. It could have I mean, been bleed. It could have been gay on the opposite side. Is it going to oh, be enough? They're in a blender. He gets the first. Fell and weak. Furia's ear right now, if you could talk to them, what would you say to them right now? Just pick a Z. It's just a right behind, guys. Just, just do it, man. Just do it. Let's go on. so alone. This angle double down. Oh! Paranoia gliding through. Molly at the feet, though. Try and stop the What team Here, does he have any idea? Trent's just on the other side. What? Has he done that? Now down to the 1v1, but he's getting flanked. Is he aware? Knife on What? Doubling up the fight back towards the A-site. Oh, oh, right up on two. It's a 1v1. Running. Him and QCK. Eight bullets left. This very comes across. Yeah, it comes in for the 4K in the round. 12 seconds left. Forcing out a rolling thunder on top of that. And Tui's made it through the smoke for that kill onto nature. The run through. The, oh, the bait. The flank from behind. Loud pulling magic out of a hat. First trip cleared. The dogs went all the way around the pillar. Tense does it again. And off on all cylinders. What? Marv has something to say about that. What? Oh my gosh. Marv has something other to say about it. Four headshots. We're just playing a mini game right now. Crashy Saucy, a 1v1. Oh, he's so calm. Four bullets left. Switches weapons. Time is of the essence. And that's all it'll be. It's been years since fans have had a reason to celebrate. But tonight, Sen City burns red. The tap on the spot, the kill from Stelson as they finally close out. Back number one. And there is that swing out. Finally getting that last pick. The Sentinels are one map away. Flashback. Tweez alone once missing. again, and now Wall's gonna be the only to deal with. He gets the first kill. South is trying to stick him. Wow. To Celsius. QCK with the off kill on the second. Remaining. Not even needed the assist. The pain on the last one. He's trying to do some dance move. Is it gonna get cleared?
being thrown. No one is towards the back. I'm towards the air. Oh, Let's go, man. <laughs> One, it's a two versus two. Right inside, trying to stick it. Another one to fall. It's all up to Zek who does get the ball. Trying to get 